Here's an excerpt of Chuck Palahniuk interviewing heartsick author Chelsea Kane. I wanted to tell the story of how we met. Mm. I know you don't like that story because the you, London it, story, the second meeting or the first meeting. Well, there are three, okay. and I know it doesn't put you in the best light, but it's my audiobook. <laughs> so I'm going to tell the story of how I met Chuck Palahniuk. Um, I had uh, seen you speak a couple of times, uh, and I, you know, had read your books. And uh, we met for the first time at Diana Abu Jaber's Easter party. Do you remember that? Do you have any memory of that at all? The sad thing is, I remember your dog. <laughs> yeah, no, because your dog and my dogs got along. That wasn't that the first was a different time? party. The first time was at Diana Abu Jaber's Easter party. Was that when I brought the eggs, the brown eggs from my chickens? I don't remember that. But I remember we spoke. We talked for like a half hour, one-on-one. We had a long conversation. Um, And then uh, I saw you again like three weeks later at another party, at Jeff and Jim's garden party, which is the big fantastic party they have. You know, They used to have it every summer, and it's like a wedding. Pink Martini. Yeah, Pink Martini was playing and lots of people. And I saw you, and I I went right over, uber confident that, of course, I am so memorable (laughs) that you would take one look at me. (laughs) <laughs> and know who I was. And I walked over. You were actually conversing with someone. <laughs> I walked right over and I said, hi, Chuck. And you looked at me. <laughs> you said, I'm sorry, have we met? <laughs> and I said, I said, I said, yeah, Diana's party. And you said, Diana? <laughs> <laughs> and I reminded you and, and you were like, oh, oh, right. You know, I'm so sorry. You know, of course. And then a few weeks after that, I was in London um, doing a reading of a book that I had coming out there, an anthology, at the uh, Charing Cross Borders. <laughs> and um, I saw that uh, there were flyers that you were going to be there the next night. And so I did my reading, and there were um, four people there, including my editor and a friend she had brought. <laughs> and so I thought, well, we should come. You I was there with my husband. We should come tomorrow you know, to support Chuck. You know, because he's a hometown writer and we should be there. And, you know, I wouldn't want there to be just four people in his audience. So um, even though I was afraid you would think at that point that I was stalking you, um, I decided, you know, to go. And so we took the tube in and, and we showed up the ch- at the Charing Cross Borders. And it was it was a zoo. You know, there were like 5,000 people there. We couldn't even see you. There were so many people there who'd come. It's like you were a rock star. And I remember you had grown since I had seen you before mutton chops. <laughs> you looked fantastic. <laughs> I don't know if the mutton chops were just for London, if it was for the whole European tour. Um, and you were, yeah, it was like you were a rock star. And afterwards, I decided I was going to go up and say hi to you, you know, again, <laughs> in the hopes that you might remember me. <laughs> Did I mention that I have got multiple personality <laughs> disorder? Yeah. And you probably met one of my other personalities. Right. Yeah, Tyler. <laughs> yeah. And then I also mentioned that under the terms of the restraining order, I was not allowed to acknowledge you. Right. Right. Because I was being advised that uh, <laughs> that y- that was a possible stalker thing happening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we all need to learn from Sir- Sherman Alexie's mistakes. <laughs> Just all the letters I wrote you, all the emails. No, but we showed up at that at the reading, and we we sort of elbowed our way uh, past the like thousand people waiting to get their books signed after after the reading, and and uh, and I said right away, "I'm Chelsea from Portland. We met at Diana's party, and then again at Jeff and Jim's party." <laughs> and I said, "May I see some identification?" <laughs> no, you said, and maybe you were faking. Oh, Chelsea, it's so nice to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a string in my side. I pull that string and it basically says the same thing. Right. How have you been? May I make this book out to you? Right. Um, yeah, and that was the third time we met. And then the fourth time we met, at, uh, I believe it was Di- Diana Abu Jabber's Labor Day party. With the dogs. <laughs> With the dogs. Okay. And from then on, we were friends. And we, yeah. That Keep was, telling that was yourself the, that, Chelsea. That was the I'm sorry, have we met? Yeah. <laughs> But we ended up in a writing group together. And uh, and why don't you talk a little bit about the writing group? The writing group was was me actually enrolling you because at the time you were in a different writing group. I was in a girl writing group. You were that met once a month. Uh-huh. And I was in a dying writing group that was rapidly losing people. Uh-huh. Why that, do you think that is, Chuck? <laughs> <laughs> My useful critiques, no uh-huh. doubt. Um, and so I thought, you know, Chelsea would be a great addition uh-huh. because Chelsea is a professional 
and she produces and and she's just you know, she's a craftsman and so I thought you'd be a perfect addition because there are some people who are dilettantes uh-huh. and there are some people who are very seriously into writing uh-huh. that they will write and they will make a living at writing and you can count on them to produce quality work that is worth hearing and commenting on and you also trust their feedback uh-huh. and you were the kind of professional peer that I wanted in that workshop. So I kind of campaigned to bring you in. And, and Did I, they say no at first? No, everyone said yes, except for you. You were the one holdout. <laughs> I was scared. I was nervous. No, it's been a really perfect, perfect compliment. And, uh, and you are just, you are just masterful at acknowledging what works in people's writing. And what work could work better. Thank you. So you're just very, very good at, at not laughing. Uh-huh. <laughs> Until later. I remember um, the first workshop that I came to. And uh, I, this workshop, we, we read our work aloud. And I had never been um, a part of a workshop where we, we, you, know, you actually were required to read your work aloud to, to strangers at the time. You know, they, we, I, hadn't, I knew Chuck and I knew no one else in the group. Um, and the work I had was Heartsick. I was maybe 150 pages into it at that point, into the first draft of Heartsick. And um, I brought the first chapter of that book in to read. And it was really scary because it's such um, – it was it was something I had been working on while still meeting with my girl writer group, and I had been too embarrassed to read it to them because it was so kind of pulp, and uh, their work was so literary and so high minded that um, I just was too self conscious. I couldn't do it, and and then I decided with the new writing group I was just going to bring it in. It's what I needed. You know, I needed feedback on this work because it's what I was working on, and I brought in that first chapter and. Uh, and I was just – I was nauseous, like literally nauseated. And I read that first chapter out loud and um, everybody liked it. You know, there were definitely – you know, there were comments. <laughs> there, were, there were edits, constructive criticism. But everybody was so encouraging. And it was the first time that I had a sense that I could finish this and that maybe I could publish it. It was great. It was so affirming. I, I, and I've said this to the writing group so many times, but um, there is no way that I ever – would have finished the book, I think, and there certainly is no way I ever would have sold it um, if it hadn't been for the feedback I got. Week after week, I would take in a chapter of Heartsick and um, and get you know so much constructive feedback that was so important, um, and also just encouragement to keep going. You know that this had a place in the world, and that it was okay to write something that was um, you know that was so genre and so just self indulgent in a guilty pleasure kind of way. To hear more of this interview, purchase or download Heartsick wherever audiobooks are sold.